Hello, this is Julia Whittup with Talk Story TV, and today we have with us Ruth Anderson, and I will let her take it from there. Great. Thank you, Julia. So I am Ruth Anderson, and I'm the author of, I'm going to show my book, One Love, Divine Healing at Open Clinic, and my time with Julia today is going to be um, talking with you somewhat about the guides that I work with as well as what happens after we die. So I will just go ahead and get started. Okay. So my background, I work with meditation and intuition to get life lessons. And it seems that spirit is never shy to give me a new lesson. And mm -hmm. the deal that I think we seem to have worked out is I am given a lesson and I write it down and I share it with others. So as long as I keep writing things down, I keep getting the messages. So I love that. Um, my guides that I work with in particular, I work with Divine Mother, and some of you may know her as Mother, Mother Earth or the Universal Feminine or the Mother of Jesus Christ, but Divine Mother is pure, unconditional love and nurturing. I work with Archangel Michael. Um, Archangel Michael takes great ownership in the work that I do, actually. I see him everywhere, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm doing. He is the overseer of the archangels. He fights against evil with good. He is an, extra, an exceptionally strong, immense healing energy. I work with Archangel Gabrielle. Some see her as male, some see her as female. I see her as female. Um, Archangel Gabrielle heralded the birth of Christ and is a muse for writers, artists, and musicians. And whenever I need a burst of creativity, I'll ask Archangel Gabrielle to sit with me and I get downloads of creative ideas and I literally have to write them down as I'm going because as soon as they come in, they're gone if I don't write them down. And lastly, I work a lot with Archangel Raphael. And Archangel Raphael is a very strong healer. He's a protector of travelers, and he helps souls transition after death. So that's, that's my group. Okay. One of the lessons that I have been given is about really the definition of life. And what I have been shown is when... And what, I, what I call God, I know everybody has their own terminology. Some, some people it's source, some people it's the universe, but for me it's God. I was given the de definition of life. And the definition I was giving was the life of a soul. And I literally saw, this was through meditation, I saw a body at the time of death, and I saw the soul moving through that body and into the afterlife. And the soul was as viable and alive after it left the body as it was prior to leaving the body. So the definition of life to me means life of the soul, which just continues on. After that, I was given the definition of death. And what I was shown was the death of the spirit, which is not the same as death of the soul. And the death of the spirit can take place at any time. And it can happen because of those things that we do to ourselves in the physical, such as over drinking, drugs, staying in low level energy. We can actually be creating a slow insidious death of our spirit every single day. So I personally, choose to live life walking with spirit. I choose to connect with my divinity, my guides that I had mentioned earlier. And I choose to stay in higher level frequencies whenever possible. So new definition of life and death for me. So Julia, do you have any thoughts on that? Yes, I think that's uh, probably the soul death you described is the same thing that some people call soul loss. I mean, it's the soul never dies. It's that spirit part. So it's not soul loss. It's spirit loss. 
and spirit death. Yep, exactly. So you had asked um, previously, what happens after we die? And I have been given some amazing opportunities to see some things. And one of the things that I observed was meeting Archangel Azrael, and it's spelled A-Z-R-A-E-L. Archangel Azrael has a male and a female presence, and I'm, I'm really understanding that all of the archangels have a male and female energy to them. Archangel Azrael is the angel of death and attends every death. When I asked if I see him as a he, um, when I asked if he had ever missed a death, he said no. If he had covered what? If he had ever missed a death, he said no. He is at every single death. Now, this doesn't um, replace your family members, you know, whoever has passed over coming in and helping guide you through. But Archangel Azrael is at every single death. His job is not to comfort you while you're dying, per se, but he's purely a guide. And he guides you um, over and to the other side. So what I felt with him was both, and I, I close my eyes a lot of times when I talk about this stuff, but it helps me revision it. So if you're wondering why I close my eyes. Um, but when I spoke with Archangel Azrael, I sensed both the high level energy as well as low level energy. And so I asked again, because I was assuming that an archangel would really just be resonating in that high level energy. So I asked again, are you an archangel? Because I was confused. I was feeling this low level energy and I said, yes. And what I saw was that he works with all of the levels of energy. And so that's why he's you know, comfortable in all of those levels of energy. I'm just not used to being with the lower level energies like that. And I was shown seven levels of the afterlife. So it, almost like when you die, and I'll, I'll kind of walk you through this, but the seven levels is almost like an apartment building that has seven different levels on it. And it's determined before you die, which of these levels of the afterlife you are going to reside in, and it's called the Cathedral of Souls. So what Archangel Azrael showed me was the first being the top, the highest level energy, um, going all the way down to the seventh, and the seventh being the lowest level of energy. And the top one, the number one, is like for the holiest of holies. I mean, imagine the whitest, pure, so white you can't even um, it's just so bright. And that's the holiest of holies. Um, I have not visited there yet. I, I sort of haven't wanted to yet because I'm, I'm afraid I'll want to stay there if I go there. So I have not seen that. I have seen um, levels two, three, um, like five, six, I've seen seven, seven going all the way down to seven being like truly the hell, the fire and brimstone the screaming, no one hears you, the isolation. Uh, seven, I have no desire to go back to again. Six was, it was a little bit higher. What I saw at level six is very unhappy souls. You know, the lower you go down, the more unhappy these souls are. And in level six in particular, there was absolutely no conscience. And I was taken to level six and, I, and it was dark, it was murky, couldn't see it. And energy was just coming at me. And it was, um, can I use the word demonic? It was very low level energy. There were things touching me, hitting me, yelling at me. I was being physically assaulted in level six. I have no interest in going back to level six. But at any rate, these levels of the afterlife that are energetic vibrational frequencies that where souls go and reside in the afterlife. So it is determined before we die which level we're going to reside in. And um, Archangel Azrael, and I don't know who else, 
determines that actually before we die. So when Archangel Azrael shows up and we pass, he takes us toward that level. That was news to me. I didn't know anything about that. So I had, at a different time, I had been given a near-death experience without having the physical near-death experience through meditation. I had had a spiritually transformative event that really showed me what it's like to go through that death process without an actual death to my physical being. So I'm really thankful that that's how spirit chose to teach it to me without having to go through the physical trauma as well. When, um, when I was being shown this experience, I was taken down a dark, dark corridor and immediately I was cloaked in like this black that matched the corridor. And I seemed to know where I was going, go walking down this corridor. There were no guides with me, but I knew where to go. And as I was walking down this corridor, it all became like a, a black tunnel. And all of a sudden there were photos all over the walls whooshing by me. And they were photos of me in my life in different situations. And so, you know, when people who have near-death experiences talk about their life flashing before their eyes, that's what this was. But it was interesting for me because they were literally like photos, like framed photos on the walls, like I'm walking down a tunnel, but there were like thousands and they just kept coming faster and faster and faster. And I saw them and I knew what they were, instantly knew what they were. Um, so that was interesting. So then I came to this very bright white opening. And, and I think people in near-death experiences, they talk about you know going through a dark tunnel, they talk about the light with you, they talk about seeing God, seeing this amazing, intense white light. And that is what I saw. Now, keep in mind, I've seen God in other um, meditation experiences. So I knew what I was seeing. I was comfortable with what I was seeing. I wasn't thrown off. I wasn't shocked. I knew I was home in God's presence, but immediately tears came to my eyes. I had this huge feeling of connectedness. And as I was in this white godly presence, I was feeling, because I was still in my body, I was feeling healing in my body. And I felt this surge in my back, almost as if something in my back was being healed that I didn't know I had a problem with. I don't know what that was. And then I felt this immense blast of white energy throughout me that had I been standing up, I think would have totally knocked me off my feet. I understood it was an energetic healing. And I also realized at that point, not only was the black cloak gone, my outer body was gone. And at that point, I was purely just emanating the white light. Um, then I was taken down another corridor and my cloak changed to, it was almost like the color of the bricks behind me. It was like not white, but not brown and not yellow, but you know, can you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So, Cloak became that color. The wall became that color. And somehow I knew where to go. I just kept following and I was hearing the term third, three, third. And I didn't know what it meant, but I knew I was in the wrong corridor. And I was saying, no, I'm not supposed to be in three. I'm not supposed to be in third. But how I even knew what I was talking about, I have no idea. And, but I was like physically in my body, I was so anxious and I was getting almost like sick because just on a soul level, I knew third three was wrong. I was taken to this panel of, of judges. It was obvious. It was like a, a tribunal. It was, um, there were seven beings in front of me. They were all white. Everything about them was white. The one in the middle was clearly an archangel. And then there were three on each side of this archangel. And 
like I said, they were all white, they were all beans, and they were telepathically with me, telepathically reviewing my life. And it was, I want to say it wasn't judgment because I wasn't feeling shame, but clearly they were judging, <laughs> clearly. And, yeah, but it was all telepathically. There were no spoken words. And I knew exactly what was happening. And I was pleading for two instead of three. And because of the life changes that I have made in the last five years of knowing divinity and speaking divinity's truth, they granted that I got to go to level two instead of level three. And so then my soul was immediately at rest once I heard level two. And then I went down another quarter. Well, now my cloak changed to a whiter cloak and the corridor changed to a whiter corridor. So the colors of the corridors get like murkier and less white as you go down. So two was feeling pretty good. So I went into, went go down the two corridor, open up to this immense, immense room. I can't even describe how huge it is, but it was full of other souls that were in that same color that I was. And I've seen these souls in the Cathedral of Souls before through meditation and working with clients. So I knew what I was looking at. It's people that have passed on that were in the same corridor, same level that I was. And they look like sort of half spirit, half body, all cloaked in the same. They all had jobs to do. Um, there's continuing education over there on the other side. There's life continuing on on the other side in the other realm in the ethereal realm so after i saw the cathedral of souls for level two then i was brought back into my body so that was my sort of near-death experience if you will so what happens after we die everything that the near-death experiencers say that's what happens our soul continues to live there's a judgment to review, and then our souls live on in the Cathedral of Souls and prepare to come back another time for another lifetime. And I'm assuming that the cloak was just uh, to give you some way to hang on to that because we wouldn't have clothes there, right? There's, you know, it's interesting because when I have worked with clients and seen their loved ones, their, their spirits do present to me wearing like a cloak. It looks almost like something out of Jesus's time, right? Not really a dress, but not really a, yeah, I don't know. But there is a level, like I'm not looking at a naked spirit body. There is some level of clothing there. But what I have seen, which is amusing to me, is that some spirits some souls, if you will, will wear the same kind of clothes that they wore here on earth, but they're white. So um, I had seen a gentleman who was wearing overalls in the spirit realm, but they were white. And, and I mentioned that to his daughter, and she said he wore overalls every day here on earth. So I guess it just depends on what a, what a spirit's comfortable wearing is what they're we're wearing over there. Huh. Okay, cool. My uh, computer is saying that my internet connection is unstable, but let's keep on and I'm going to carry my laptop in here and plug it directly into the... I usually don't do it on the laptop because of that. You can get an unstable internet connection. Wow, that is fascinating, though. Let me see. I would have to directly go from... Go ahead and tell us more while I'm doing this. So... I work so closely with my guides. So when I learned that I was. Oh, 
Oh, shoot. I'm sure that's you, right? <laughs> okay. okay, we're back on. Okay, I let's go ahead. I'll probably have to edit this video, but at least we'll... Now everything's going off. <laughs> so, did you hear my point, my first point, or no? Should I just take it over? It was about I can, from the Archangels. Okay, so go ahead, and uh, I'll have to cut out all that blank space in the middle of the video, but it'll be fine. Okay. So, so I. I was turning that on to call you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So um, I'll just I'll backtrack a little bit, and then you can cut out that part. But okay. When I prepare to do a radio podcast or work with a client, I'll ask specifically of my divinity, "What do you want them to know? This is your opportunity to speak through me. So what what should I be saying?" And when I told them, Julie, I was going to be working with you and your folks, they gave me four things to, to please say. I'm going to do that. So the first thing, there is definitely a God that um, when we just seek within ourselves to replenish our energy without upward and outward to God or source, we really need it. So um, just for your folks to know, to connect in with the energy of God and replenish energy that way. Secondly, um, Divinity wanted to make sure your folks understood that life for a soul continues after death, and that's what we had just been talking about. Thirdly, they want your people to know that the Archangels and the Divine Mother are there, and your people can connect with them anytime they want. All they have to do is ask for the Archangels or Divine Mother to sit with them, to connect with them. Lastly, for listeners to know that we are all connected, that energetically we are really all pieces of one whole and um, to send love and care to our brothers and sisters in Houston, those dealing with the effects of the hurricane, as well as others across the globe that when we send love to them, it's also love to us as we're all part of one. So those were the messages from the Archangels. Okay. Cool. I'm, it's nice that you had a near-death experience without having a car accident or something. <laughs> I was really thankful for that, yes. Yes. <laughs> That's fabulous. So that's what you talk about in your book. You know, the book is the book is about the experiences I had getting to the point of um, understanding my intuition and having a voice as an intuitive healer. And it's also about divine healing at Open Clinic, which you and I did not talk about in meditation in the ethereal realm where souls who were still in a body or souls that had been in a body and had passed over could go for healing. And the healing is provided by my guides and through God's love coming down through me and I channel God's love sort of holding space for the healing that takes place there. Um, I, 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 because I'm an intuitive, I can see and understand the souls that are there, understand what their stories are and why they're there for healing. So I know who has either died already and needs assistance with either healing or passing over, or I know who is still in a body and why they're there for healing. So that's called divine healing at open clinic because there's no walls to this healing space. There's no barriers. There's no limits. Souls can come in. <laughs> okay, I think of the clinic as a place with walls, but... No, that's why it's an open clinic. <laughs> okay. It's open 24-7 to any, to any spirit that is needing that. And um, through part of my calling as a minister, 
I have brought Open Clinic, Divine Healing at Open Clinic, into the physical realm. So when I do a podcast or work with clients, I work with my divinity to provide healing, either on a social, emotional, sometimes physical level, to the people that are there in the room. So that's Divine Healing at Open Clinic in the physical realm. So that's what the book is about. The book is about... Uh, my journey and about divine healing at Open Clinic in the ethereal realm, because by when I wrote this book, I had not yet moved the healing into the physical realm. Oh, okay. That's interesting. My second book that I'm working on now is about divine healing in the physical realm, as well as many of the lessons that Spirit has been teaching me. Okay, wonderful. And when do you expect to have that book out? Well, I'm just in the middle of writing it now. So I'm hoping, well, gosh, I would love to see it out by Christmas. We'll see. Okay, that would be great. So are you all wanting to do a meditation? Yeah, that would be wonderful. Thank you. So this meditation is about 12 minutes long. So um, before we get started, I want to remind you that Divine Mother and Archangels Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael are already here with us. They've been in the room with me while we've been talking thus far. And in the spirit realm, there is no time or space. That means the divinity can be with each of us at exactly the same time. They have promised to attend and provide healing on a physical, emotional, and spiritual basis. So keep in mind that doesn't mean that how you want to receive healing is necessarily the kind of healing they will provide. They, they know what they want to provide for you. So please stay open to the myriad of possibilities. So for me, sometimes the healing feels like an expansion of my heart or a crown chakra. Sometimes it's a release of grief and sometimes I'll cry. Um, I really never know what to expect when I, when I sit with them and receive a healing. So let's get started. I invite you to get comfortable. Close your eyes. Place your feet flat on the floor. Sink into your chair and feel it supporting your weight. Inhale and exhale. If you have any distracting thoughts that come up for you, create an imaginary bubble around them and just send them up to God or source or your divinity. Now over your head, imagine a long green colored column of light. It can be any shade of green that would feel good to your body. Mine is a bright shade of green like new grass in the spring. Imagine this green column of light flowing down through your crown at the top of your head. Have it flow down through your head, down your throat and neck, through your chest and your heart space, down through your abdomen, down your trunk, down your legs and out your feet. Inhale and exhale. Now bring your attention to your heart space. See the continuing flow of green light filling up and gently expanding your heart space in every direction. Notice if you are aware of any blockages or stuck energy in your heart space that you can see, feel, or imagine. And imagine them being melted, broken down, or moved out by the green energy. If you don't notice anything, that's okay. Just try to imagine it. So breathe into your heart space. Inhale. And exhale. With your imagination, sink and 
into your newly expanded heart space. You might see or feel colors or pictures of people that you are carrying in your heart space. I like to create a bubble around those pictures, say I love you, and send that bubble and person's energy up to God or source so that person's energy is returned back to them. It doesn't mean that I'm forgetting about them or that I'm no longer connected to them. It just means that I'm sending them back their energy so they can have all their energy with them. And that allows those that you love to be at their fullest and for you to receive a deeper healing. As you release the energy of others from your heart space, feel the green vibrational energy continue to flow and fill up all the available space in your heart chakra. So let's create a bubble of green loving light coming from our heart space and all of that green loving light that we have going on there and send it out to Houston or to wherever in the world you would want to send love and light to someone who would benefit from receiving it. Now imagine a column of gold colored healing light over your head coming to you from your God, source, or your divinity. Bring your attention up to your crown chakra at the top of your head. Imagine opening your crown chakra so you are able to receive this golden column of vibrational light flowing down through your crown. Have it flow gently and continually down through your head down your throat and neck, through your chest and heart space, down through your abdomen, down your trunk, down your legs, and out your feet. With your imagination, pay attention to the space in the opening of the crown on your head. Have the gold healing energy gently stretching your crown chakra open in every direction, allowing you to reach energetically to your divinity. Try to notice if the gold healing energy is moving out any blockages or stuck energy. If you see any pictures of people or situations, feel free to surround the image in a bubble and send it up to your divinity. Continue to let the gold healing energy flow. As the excess golden light flows down, allow it to fill up your entire body and overflow into your aura so you are completely surrounded and filled up with the gold vibrational light. Now we are going to ask in the divine healing white light. Imagine a brilliant divine white column of light above you coming from God, source, or your divinity. As this white light is divine light, it might feel of a higher vibrational frequency. If it feels too intense to you, simply reduce the amount of light that is flowing through you. Imagine, see, or feel the white light as it enters your crown, flows gently and continually down through your head, down your throat and neck, through your chest and heart space, down through your abdomen, down your trunk, down your legs, and out your feet. 
Continue to let the divine white healing energy flow. As the excess white light flows down, allow it to fill up your entire body and overflow into your aura so you are completely surrounded and filled up by the divine vibrational light. Allow yourself to inhale and sit for a moment and feel this divine light. Divine Mother, Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, and Archangel Raphael, you have promised me that whenever people are gathered for open clinic, you will be present and you will provide healing. I ask that every person hearing this meditation will not only experience you now, but will be able to call on you at any time simply by asking for you to be present with them. My prayer is that each of these people will feel comfortable enough to call on you with the happiness and knowingness that you are there for them. Now I encourage you to be open to the possibility that you might hear, feel, or intuitively see something. Or maybe you won't be aware of anything at all. It's all okay. I will be quiet for a moment while we sit in this divine healing white light and in the presence of the divinity. Thank you, Divine Mother, Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, and Archangel Raphael. Us today, and for your promise to continue to be there when people ask for you with a loving and open heart. If you would like to share your gratitude with the divinity, please do so at this time. Now let's bring our attention back down into our bodies. Feel the chair beneath you and feel your feet flat on the floor. When you are ready, slowly open your eyes. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Ruth. And if you want to contact Ruth, just uh, look for her, Ruth Anderson, in our membership directory and connect with her and ask her anything you'd like. <laughs> Great. And then I'm also available at www.theministryonline.org. Okay. I'm also, I'm also on Facebook at The Ministry Online. And my email is openclinic1 at outlook.com. Okay. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Julia. Take care.